welcome back to this Tabletop Tavern Campaign 2 Alice You, this is the second episode of this campaign. I am, as always, your humble dungeon master, Jenny. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm going to allow my fabulous, beautiful, wonderful players to introduce themselves, starting with the ever stylish, the punk rock is hell today, Stacy. Hi, my name is Stacy. I use she, her pronouns, and I will be playing Rosalie Motley today. I'm Pippin. I use they, them, and I'm playing Vesper Thornquill. Hi, I'm Cam. I also use they, them, and I'm playing Essie Hepburn. I'm Victoria. My pronouns are she, her, and I play Fleur Farrow. I'm Doe. Pronouns are she, her, and I play Ian Farrow. All right, and when we last left off, uh, you are all in a rather uh, dangerous situation. But before that, we should probably go over what happened last episode. Last episode, everyone moved in for orientation week at Alis University, the home of the Griffins. Ka, ka, motherfuckers. Ka, 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 ka. Uh, ka, ka. <laughs> Everyone met their roommates, which for most of our players meant that they met each other for the very first time. The odd one out, so to speak, was the lovely Fleur Farrow, uh, whose roommate goes by the name of Camila and turns out to be a rather important person. Camila and Fleur went to uh, lacrosse tryouts and did quite well making the team. And the rest of the party got to know each other for the very first time. They all went to dinner at the campus dining hall together. And on the way home from said dinner, Ian, the Rangers, animal companion, a uh, large dog by the name of Aspen, happened across something strange in the bushes. When last we left off, I had you all roll initiative. You were kind enough to give those initiatives to me before the start of the game. And although the lovely Fleur Pharaoh rolled a dirty 20, she is not the first to move. You are all standing, well, most of you along the pathway, a nice paved path overviewed by a couple of street lights to kind of keep everything relatively safe during the darkest hours of the night. Uh, Ian and Fleur had gone to go investigate the bushes at which Aspen was growling. And as they grow co close, Ian heard something rustling in the leaves. Our very first move is taken by a creature unseen, except for a set of glowing red eyes. Let me see who's where. Ian! Yes. You lean forward to investigate in the bushes. And as you do, something shoots out at you. It's a liquid, slick, uh, dark, and you realize that you are covered in oil. Ew. This yeah. oil uh, kind of sends you spluttering backwards a little bit as from inside the bushes, a little creature emerges. It's about three and a half feet tall, approximately the size of your roommate Vesper, uh, with pointed little ears, long spidery fingers, a thin body that sort of looks like dark rubber stretched over a strange, far too long for its size skeleton. It looks up at you with these big glowing red eyes, this mouth dripping this viscous oil, and this large hooked nose from which runs more, more of this oily kind of mucus substance. And it makes a noise at you. <laughs> and before you can really react, uh, it swings a fist at your knees as hard as it possibly can. Uh, what is your armor class? 15. All right. What? Let's see. So a 13 does not hit, correct? Correct. All right. Um, however, you are in this sort of oil puddle that it has shot out at you. Can I have you roll a dexterity saving throw? Absolutely, you can. Would it be easier if I just do it through... Uh... If you do it through, if you guys can do attacks at least through roll twenty, that would be awesome. Or uh, D and D Beyond. I'll just that would do be it great. all for you. All right, uh, you managed to keep your your footing in this like 
disgusting puddle of oil as this little creature <laughs> makes these strange, incomprehensible noises at you. Uh, next in the initiative order is Fleur. You've just watched this like strange little creature come out and shoot a puddle of oil at your brother and swing a tiny little fist at him. Uh, so Fleur kind of goes, oh, disgusting. And then in one fell swoop, she like pulls, she has many bracelets, big accessory girl. Pulls Classic. a scrunchie off of her wrist, pulls her hair up into a ponytail, and pulls out her great axe. Just getting ready. Um, how much movement do I have? I have 30 you feet. You have 30 feet. And for those of you who are just tuning in, uh, we are using a modified darkness scale for this battle. So any area uh, within this, this sort of area that, that Fleur and Ian are in, for, for creatures without dark vision, you cannot see further than five feet ahead of you. Um, you can see, like, sort of Ian's form, so you haven't actually seen this creature, you've, you've just sort of seen, like, a shadow jump out at him. Um, if you do not have dark vision around here, this is going to be, you can see 10 feet ahead of you, and here is dim lighting, mm. which decreases your vision to 30 feet. Okay. So, I... Uh, I think it would be safe to assume that I can, I can see Ian, I can see his form, I can see him like wiping something off and I can hear things and I know Aspen's going for something. So I am going to take my 15 feet of movement. If I go here, I can attack the thing directly adjacent to me, right? Correct. Right. And is that only five feet of movement then? Because I go from box to so box diagonal. So diagonals are uh, 10 feet. 10 feet. Okay. That's what yeah. I wanted to make sure. Okay. So yes. I'm going to take 10 feet of movement um, and I am going to go into a rage. Classic. That consumes a bonus action. Yep. Uh, I'm so excited. This is the first time I've gotten to say that. Um, and then I'm going to... <laughs> You're going to be saying it a lot. <laughs> I know. I'm excited. <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, attack the creature that I can now see. Um, uh, I don't have that extension set up. I'm going to set it up in between this next round. So I am going to just roll this time. Perfect. But I'll set it up in between this next round. Yeah, if, if y'all could just try yeah. to use the Beyond 20 extension for yeah. uh, battles, it just makes it easy for me to keep track of. Yeah, I disabled it. like. A... Oh, Jesus. That's a nat 20. All right, so you are going to hit it for double damage. Go ahead and roll damage and then multiply that by two for me, please. All right. <laughs> So that is 18 damage. All right, oh. there you go. Uh, Ian, Very this nice. thing just like splutters out. And uh, can I quickly get you to roll a... Let's call this an insight check. Oh. Actually, let's call it a flat int check. Oh. Int, not, not Ian's strongest. Nope. <laughs> okay, says the barbarian. <laughs> okay, it's actually a dirty 20. You had a dirty Ooh. 20. Um, as Fleur swings her axe into this thing and just pretty much obliterates it, it's it's barely on its legs, Um, you could swear you understand it for the briefest of moments. You can't quite make out what it's saying, but it's almost like, you know when you hear people talking in another room mm -hmm. and you can tell that they're speaking English and you know that they're saying words you would recognize, but you can't quite hear them? That's gotcha. exactly how this feels. So I actually hear it versus just, I like, versus hearing it in my head. Exactly. Okay, okay. Uh, Fleur, you do not have this same experience. You Hell hear no. it make a disgusting squelching noise. She wouldn't even you... try. This thing is gross and it just hit her brother. She does not care. Uh, yeah, as you bury your axe into it. Ian's so, like wiping with... off the oil, the gunk, uh, and kind of like like adjusts his shoulders and is like, thanks, Floor, but did you hear that? As Ian Feels says like... that before you can react, uh, another little creature scuttles out <laughs> of this bush. Uh, this one is... The same sort of strange gray-black rubber stretched over bones, but even though it has the same point as ears, its eyes are a shade of, like, near black. And its nose is not hooked nor large, but sort of flat. Almost like two slits carved into its face. Okay, Voldemort. Um, it 
uh, lets out a similar little puddle of oil that extends five feet around it. And, I am uh, going to take my last few feet of movement, though, before they go. Okay, Because I still it. had 20 feet, so I'm going to go 15 feet to here. All right, so you can no longer see what's happening here, Fleur. Ooh, do I want to do that then? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go here so I can still see Ian. You can still see Ian. You cannot see mm. Aspen. That's okay. Um, Ian, you watch as this strange little creature goes and uh, reaches for Aspen. It's got no. these like little like oil-soaked hands, and it uh, swipes at him. What is... I'll just Aspen call out for Aspen and, and Ooh, angst. So that is a nat 20. So that's no. going to do double damage. Oh, no. Oh, that's I didn't okay. roll initiative. Oh, you guys are my turn. Your yeah, initiative yeah. is the same as, as Aspen's. Aspen takes 10 damage. Oh, Aspen, baby. So what's Aspen's full health, though? Thir- 37. Okay. So okay, that's now good. he's 27. Just got to keep track. <laughs> yeah. Um... All right, and now we are going to have Doe. It is Ian's turn. So Ian can see all of this happening. Those of you who are behind, I believe that you have 60 feet of dark vision, correct? Yes. Yes. So you can see these little creatures. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can see Aspen. You can see Fleur. Fleur, you can't see shit. Uh, I can see Ian though, right? Yes, Ian, it's your turn. So, to use that thing that I have, that I haven't revealed yet, do I have to do anything special? No, so that is uh, basically an innate talent. This is probably the first time you've ever noticed it. Okay. So, is that talent, like, causing anything different? Like, what am I seeing compared to everybody else? So, you are seeing uh, movement in the bushes. You are seeing these two creatures. You can see your friends behind you, and you can see Fleur standing next to you. Okay, so nothing out of the ordinary right now? No. Okay. Like, you can see that the bushes are moving, so presumably there are more of these creatures in there. Okay. Um, I am going to immediately call back Aspen. Um, I know that's my bonus action, but I'll go ahead and, and do it first. What are you having Aspen do? I'm just getting him to my side, so away so from- So are you having him take the disengage action? Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I assigned Aspen's movement to you. I will do that very quickly. Um, he's got 50 feet. And do you want him to move directly next to you or all the way back? I'm gonna say all the way back, like behind me. Okay, so like here? Yeah, perfect. All right. Um, so then I'm gonna kind of, <laughs> uh, can I try and talk to them actually? Like, can I just kind of say, like, I'm just, I'm just gonna, uh, like, yell out, like, a cautionary hello? Just to see, because I heard that weird kind of almost human thing earlier, uh, and see if they respond at all. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> say the hell? that this. Okay, so what you can do is you could roll a check. We're going to call this... Um, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to decide what kind of check this is going to be. We're going to call this a uh, a history check. Eh. <laughs> eh. Six. Not bad. Um, you call out using a free action. I'm not gonna make a six your your action for this turn. And you hear um, just what hears like maybe crying. Crying? And more of that like <laughs> I was gonna see how long you're good. <laughs> Um, okay, so I am going to... Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull out my longbow and um, try to hit the one that attacked Aspen. Not the one directly in front of me, but the one uh, over to the left. All right. Me a roll. 26. All right, a 26 is gonna hit. Can you roll for damage? I betcha. Seven. 
All right, so you hit that one for seven damage. Uh, your arrow like pierces into its strange rubbery skin, and you see that it does damage, but it kind of like almost repels it. Repels it, like oh. it, it stretches a little bit and then kind of yeah. shoots it out, not back towards you or anything, but a few inches away. Okay. Um, and it lets out another. <laughs> uh, Rose. Why? What the hell? <laughs> Rosalie, it is your turn. Um, I'm first gonna move Rosalie 30 feet, I believe, 10, 20, 30 here, yeah, directly in front. Um, uh, one, two, one second, I'm just counting five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So to that creature is 30? To Ian is 25, to the other creature is 30, to Fleur is 20, and to Aspen is 20. Okay. And it would co- would it be an action or a bonus action to move again? I forgot. Uh, so it would con- it com- consumes an action to do a dash action. Yeah. Um, okay. You think it's a bonus action because you always play rogues, so you're used to using <laughs> a cunning action. Okay. <laughs> um, I think I'm just gonna move uh, another action to right next to Aspen. All right, so you dash to Aspen. That consumes your turn, unless, uh, do you have a bonus action you want to use? Yeah. Uh, why yeah. not? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll do, um... Might as well. Here. Nah, never mind. I won't, I'm not going to do anything quite yet. All right, so you don't take a bonus action, yeah. which means it is now, uh, as you approach your new friends, The bushes in front of you rattle. You can hear the leaves shaking, and another one of these little mm, three and a half foot tall creatures runs up right beside you. Uh It turns to you, Rosalie, and um, can you roll a quick insight check as it uh, moves to squirt you with oil and just slash at you? Um, So you look down at this little creature. It has those glowing red eyes. Uh, and you notice that its eyes are rimmed with just oily black tears as it takes a hand and tries to pummel you uh, right in the kneecaps. Can I rea- I'm bad about attacking these Can I react now? to that? To its pummeling you? Yes. Floor doesn't though. Uh, what is your, uh, what, what would you like to do to your reaction? I would like to do a warding flare. Okay. And so, I'm gonna impose divine. I'm just gonna say like, back. <laughs> and what does Don't a warding flare me. do? <laughs> and it's gonna impose divine light between yourself and the attacking enemy. When you are attacked by a creature within 30 feet of you that you can see, you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll, causing light to flare before the attacker, before it hits or misses. Perfect. Um. So, what does that because... divine light do for the light? So it's very brief. It lasts Fuck. for. Rosalie's action, which consumes, there are six of you, a turn is six seconds, there, there is a certain amount of enemies, each person's turn lasts under half a second. So for half a second, there is a flash. Yeah. Um, and that's it. Rosalie, uh, this little creature rolls a seven to hit you. Does a seven hit? No. All right, it squirts the oil at you as it like kind of flails and misses you and you shoot this blinding flash at it and makes a little <laughs> Uh, as it releases this oil almost on instinct. Can I have a dexterity saving throw from you, please? Yes. Hey. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Uh, <laughs> it shoots it at you, and you immediately feel your, your feet go out from under you. You have never been a very elegant or graceful person. You've always been a little bit of a klutz, and so you are quite used to falling over. However, now you are flat on your back, staring up at the foliage that covers the trees all over the university, and through them you can see the stars. Uh, next to you oh, is Ian, who just witnessed, witnessed you fall flat on your ass. You okay? <laughs> Better? Uh, oh. uh, am I close enough to just reach out a hand and, and help Rosalie up? That would consume a help action, and it would have to be used on your next turn. Okay. 
Um, next will be Pippin. So Vesper, it is your turn. Lovely. Um, then I think uh, I, th- I think I'm gonna stay right next to this uh, this lovely street lamp that I'm next to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I I do I do like I gotta say I I, I like the street lamp. Um, and do you have I, dark vision, Vesper? I do. Okay, good. Uh, I, I, I know it's feet. so rare for a DM to ask that, but like no, no, I can no, never I, remember with gnomes. Yeah, so I, I, I've seen what's going on and I'm concerned that they just keep showing up. <laughs> um, so before more show up, uh, Vesper is gonna like like fumble to, to just like flip open to, to a page uh, and uh, cast magic missile. Let's uh, one go! One to each of them. <laughs> Uh, so that's, uh, look, that's, uh, 1d plus 1. Roll, please. There we go. I love that missile. Right? That is, uh, so good. each one does four, uh, and it's one to each of them. It's three darts, three missiles. Right. So I make these, like, these blue little, like, 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 cartoon bullets. Uh, yes! <laughs> they look like, they look like they belong on cartoon, ne- on, like, uh, on, on, uh, on Toon. Uh, uh, tsunami? They're yeah. tsunami missiles. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to come up with a parody name for oh, Toon um, animated. To uh, three animated. Nami. Three Nami. Three, three Nami. Nami. Uh, they, they, these these little like missiles look like they belong in Three Nami, and each one goes to each of them. <laughs> All right. So uh, the first one that emerged, the one directly in front of Ian, you. Uh, shoot this missile at it and it erupts um, into just like a big oily mess. Ian, it gets on on your Chuck Taylors, on the bottom of your jeans. Um, But this creature is well and truly dead. The other two, uh, the missiles hit them and again, that strange elastic property of their body where like it definitely hurts them. You can see it do damage. You can see some of this oil leak out like blood, but um it almost like rejects the the magic missile and sort of releases it back towards you. Uh, now we have Essie, and just for the record, uh, you will see this little blue light here. I don't remember if I mentioned it. This is a an emergency call box. Lovely. Is that going to take an action or a bonus action to use? That takes an action. Ooh, we're adventurers. Okay. <laughs> Um, I am, I- I'm assuming Essie knows in character that that's an emergency. Yeah. Okay, cool. Absolutely. That's the kind of thing that they're, they're fairly common. They have them near bus stops. Um, there's several all over campus. When you first arrived, you were handed a map that showed the locations of all the emergency call boxes on campus. Sweet. Um, Essie is going to run over and uh, use the emergency uh, call box. All right, so you are going to take an action to use the emergency call box. Can I have you roll a percentage die on anything but a one through five? Your call goes through. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Oh, God. (laughs) 96. All right, so you dial in the number, the emergency number for for campus security, and it begins to ring through. Uh, As you wait for someone to pick up, we go to the bushes. There's more rattling in Mm. the bushes, more of this incredibly off-putting crying, Ian, that you can hear, but no one else seems to be able to hear. Hey. Another creature sort of tumbles out of the bushes, lands near you, and takes a big ol' swipe at you. Um, does an 18 hit? It does! Alright, so it takes it takes a hand, which this creature oddly has long claws. Gross. Um, in, in place of fingers. They're almost sort of knife-like and strange, like something out of a child's nightmare. Um... It slashes at you and does six damage. If it is, if I have resistance, what does that mean? What kind of resistance do you have? It says, uh, when I'm in a rage, I gain advantage on strength checks, uh, plus two melee damage with strength weapons, resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. So you take three damage. Fuck yeah. 
Yeah. All so right. it cuts that in half then? Yes, it, it halves the damage. Hey, um, you also need to make a dexterity saving throw as it releases, it's crying these like black oily tears and uh, the oil sort of accumulates very rapidly underneath it. 18. All right, uh, you do not slip in this puddle, but it, it is kind of like strange and very Gross. unsettling as it seeps into your shoes. Yeah. Uh, next, the bushes rattle again. This is bad. Hey, Bessie. Another one of these little creatures comes out, and uh, Ian, it looks up at you with like icy blue eyes that reflect blue. your image back at you. Um, and in its eyes, you see something very strange. Um, I'm going to need you to roll a deception check to hide your perception of this from your friends. It should be fairly easy because the lighting is not uh, great. <laughs> Okay. Fleur's right beside him. Six? He ain't hiding shit from Fleur. (laughs) Ian, it's your reaction that you have to conceal, but I will tell you what you see first. Reflected in the eyes of this creature, you see a little boy with sort of light eyes, dark hair, medium-toned skin, um, sitting at a dining table, crying as his parents hold... One of, the, one of his hands each and tell him something. Standing next to him with her hand on his shoulder is a girl with blonde curly hair. But she's crying too. Fleur looks at Ian's reaction. He goes, what, is, what happened? Uh, Ian, can I have a wisdom saving throw? Yep. Oh no. Fifteen. All right, you take four psychic damage. Oof. <laughs> you feel incredibly lonely. Um, it has been a long time since you felt this isolated. As Fleur asks you what's wrong, and there is a part of you, something inside of you, that tells you that she could never understand what's wrong. That it's a miracle that she understands you in the first place, because after all, she's not who you pretend she is to you. Uh, Ian kind of stiffens and, like, shudders as if he just, like, got a chill. And he kind of, like, waves back to floor, and he's just like, this, this, this one has blue eyes, the rest, the rest have red eyes, it's just weird. It's kinda- and, like, Fleur can tell he's lying, <laughs> based on the six deception check, right? Yeah. Fleur kind of just looks at him and goes, we're talking about this later. Um, Ian's another- gonna just, no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. As you two converse, uh, our dear friend Rosalie is still lying on the ground. You are prone. Um, <laughs> you, therefore, are... <laughs> Unable to react as another one of these little creatures um, comes out of the bushes. Another one? With <laughs> those, like, haunting tears. This is a good thing Essie calls for help. Comes out of the bushes and slashes at you. It does have advantage on this attack because you are prone. prone. No. Um, Out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fatality. Not actually. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Please don't kill really, our cleric. I will have you know that this is a one eighth challenge rating creature. If any of you die to them, it is your fault. <laughs> Heard. Jenny says it's a one eighth challenge and then gives us ten. Does a fifteen hit? <laughs> uh, fifteen does not hit. Interesting. All Damn. right. So this creature like swipes at you, and when it misses, it lets out like a. <laughs> and for a second, you could swear you hear it cry. All right, the final creature emerges from behind the bushes, which means that I am going to reveal the bushes to you all um, since that's, you know, an option now. (laughs) 
There we go. Not perfect reveal, but good enough. Uh, this creature comes sprinting out of the bushes and runs directly towards Essie. I just have oh. to see what its run speed is. All right, it's going to take a dash action. Ooh, Fun! Fun! Okay. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> oh, no. Essie's got like four health total. <laughs> <laughs> It the runs. dog is has more health than me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Essie, it stares up at you. <laughs> Essie, you can swear for half a minute that you hear it crying. <laughs> All right. Just trying to make us feel bad. This is terrifying. Also, I just want to note, uh, Jenny, I am taking time stamps of every single time you make the creature noises. <laughs> God damn it. Alright. 20 uh, minutes of Jenny making gremlin noises. <laughs> Probably. That's the episode. That's, That's the going episode. up on our YouTube channel in a few weeks, everyone. Just wait for it. <laughs> Fleur, it is your turn. Alright, so Fleur is surrounded by creatures. Um, so she's going to do what she does best. She's going to hit something. Uh, Which one are you going to hit? Fleur is going to hit this one. This one? The one that's directly in front of her. You have uh, advantage because that creature is flanked by Ian. Perfect. Love to hear it. Um, so I am going to swing with my great axe. Uh, so I get to roll twice, right? Go for it. Could, can you take an opportunity attack against your own party member? Does a 13 hit? I am so sorry. I was Are really distracted. A 13 does not hit. No. It might okay. hit you, but maybe prevent you from hitting the specific one. <laughs> well, I can't hit it anyways. Because a 13 does not hit. Sick, we're good. I'm not going to hit um, you. <laughs> I think that's it then. All right. Yeah. Next up is... Oh, God. It's uh, this guy. I believe, correct? The first, whatever the first one was. Or no, the first, the first one's dead. So this, I believe it's the what, second it's one, the, which is... The second the one, one right next to the left. left. The right. This yeah. one? All right, so this one uh, goes to swipe at Rosalie again, who is still prone. So that's advantage again. Ooh. Rosalie, you are getting lucky. This thing rolled a... Uh, oh, wait, I rolled for damage, not for attack. Give me just a second. I was like, why is there a minus one? Ooh, okay, you're <laughs> unlucky. This thing rolled a nat 20. <gasps> um, that hits. <laughs> it swipes at you and uh, hits you. Um, let's see, I'm gonna just roll one and then have something else happen. So you've, your first damage is four. As it hits you, it looks deep into your eyes. Rosalie, in its eyes. Roll me a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. So DC 16. I got... Ooh, you got a, you got a 20. <gasps> In its eyes, you see something that you are very familiar with. You see a dark bedroom, a girl, maybe 13 years old, in a sweater and a skirt, reading a book. And the door opens, and in walks... The girl's parents, they sit down at the edge of the bed, one takes her hand, and they begin to talk to her. And you watch the little girl's face fall, but you pull your eyes away from this creature's eyes, and you blink back tears, and you remember your mom this morning, and how proud she is of you. And that moment doesn't feel quite as scary and sad as it used to feel. Because it put you right where you are now. Alright, next up is Ian. Ian's gonna kneel down and try to, like, get at this creature to the left of him's level. As soon as Ian kneels, Fleur goes, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I... Listen, it's weird, but... Yeah, it's weird. No, I I think they're crying. Pardon? Like, like, like sad, like... Grief, crying. 
I don't know. Ian, it looks like they're attacking us to me. I mean, but maybe they're scared. They're animals, after all. Are they? I think they so. They look like weird little latex creatures, Ian. <laughs> he shrugs and casts Speak with Animals. Stop the bullying. <laughs> Mm, so this is not an animal. Is it a However, beast? No. Okay. I will allow you to roll a DC 20 Arcana check. Ooh. Okay. What's your modifier for Arcana? Plus three. So you gotta roll 17 or higher. I sure didn't! I sure didn't oh, roll that! sure did not! <laughs> you lean down to this little creature and try to speak to it, and it slashes out at you using reaction. <laughs> uh, Ian's gonna, like, <laughs> like, move away and then stand up and <laughs> just growl under his breath. You were right. <laughs> <laughs> so, question. As a barbarian, uh -huh. well, I guess because it was a reaction, I can't react to a reaction. You can react to a reaction. Can I jump in front of Ian? I mean, it and doesn't hit. hit instead? Oh, okay. So, but, like, in the case that, like, Ian was beside me, if Ian does get attacked, can I jump in front to take the that hit? That is a feat that you oh, okay. can take. Okay. These are the things I need to learn. Yes. As a former All caster right. main. However, <laughs> as a former caster main, you should know that you can react to a reaction because you can, in fact, counterspell a counterspell. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, Stacy, it is now Rosalie's oh, wait, turn. can I do a bonus section? Oh, yeah. Use, use your bonus action. Um, I want to... Uh, call to Aspen and have him uh, attack the the one right next to Rosalie. So first he'll move probably here and then attack this one. Uh, here, I'll show you. This one? Yeah, that one. Alright, perfect. Roll, please. Oh, what is a... Uh... I forget. I add, I add it to mine, right? Like there is a modifier. The modifier for I gave you a stat block, um, and I adjusted the modifier to be correct. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna roll it from here, and I'll just yeah. So just just roll a bite attack on there. So that is an eight. Eight plus five. All right. So that is a thirteen. A thirteen just misses. So Aspen lunges forward. However, she does, in fact, I'm sorry, he does, in fact, have advantage because he has pack tactics. Mm. Bless my child. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> I will roll again, and this time I, I use the right button. All right, a uh, six, a critical fail. Um, Aspen lunges forward to bite this creature and his paws slide through the oil and he does like a little dog tumble, you know when dogs run too fast and they just tumble over their own feet um, and, and slides forward uh, to here. Okay. All I'm right. Gonna, I'm gonna let out a little bit of an exas exasperated sigh and like cover my face. <laughs> Rosalie, goes, it you is do? your turn. Um, can I cast a spell even though I'm on the ground and prone? So if you ca if you go to attack a creature, you will have disadvantage. You can use half your movement speed to stand up. Oh, okay, then I just stand up. <laughs> um, and then I'll stand up. I'll like wipe the little dirt off my skirt, and I'm gonna say, please leave my friends alone. And I'm gonna cast the my channel divinity, the radiance of the dawn. All right. So, um, each creature within 30 feet of me, which is all of them but Essie, the one near Essie, is gonna have to do a constitution, constitution saving throw. Okay, I have to check something. Is this very, just foes, or is it us as well? No, very, just foes. Okay. Very quick. Um... Oh no, do they get double damage? That's what Jenny's checking um, on. So, can you read to me again what they have to do? First, they're gonna do a constitution saving throw, and then they'll take radiant damage 2d10 plus my cleric level. Okay, this is not the creature I was thinking of, so they do okay. not take double damage. There are certain creatures that can only spawn in dark, and if the sunlight happens, they are sent back to their plane of origin. That is ah. not these. Okay. Okay, you're gonna make me roll 
what is this, so five many. con saving throws? Yeah, oh, they gotta no. pass, um, the yeah. DC is 15. All right, so, 15, 17, two passes, uh, then a three is a fail, so one fail, and 11 is a fail, fail and a 20 is a save, correct? So, yes, the ones that saved get half damage. And okay, so how much, can you tell me what the damage is now? Uh, D, 2d10 plus 4. All right, would you roll that? Yeah, one second. Good show. Go off. Hell okay. yeah. Jesus Christ. Let's All right, go. So. Oh, all Let's right. Spicy. Rosalie. Okay, so Rosalie stands up and just opens her palms and spilling from her palms comes the radiance of the sun. You can see in her shadow dancing the vision of a woman just for the set for a second taller and broader than rosalie um with wide hips and a thin waist and in this scorched earth campaign of of just violence enacted against these sad little creatures um all but one explode into this oily black mess. Um, Rosalie single-handedly basically kills four of these creatures in one fell swoop. So nobody's allowed to talk any shit about clerics doing damage. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm not too sure if I can do a bonus action. What bonus action do you want to do? Is Aspen within spell reach with me for me? I kind of want to see if I can healing word Aspen. You can healing, uh, that's 10 feet to Aspen. Yeah, I can do that. So, I'm not too sure if that's what I can do. Can I do that? Uh, do that healing word is a leveled spell, as is what you just did, so yeah. you cannot do that. Okay, just wanted to double check, so. So even if it's a bonus action, unless it's a level zero cantrip, you cannot cast it. Got it. And even some cantrips are in action, so, right? Right, right. A level zero is an at-will cantrip. It doesn't consume a spell slot. Oh, okay, sweet. Because it's not a leveled spell. Okay, sweet. Thank you. All right, (laughs) so if that's your turn, we jump to Essie. Essie, the phone rings. The line goes through. This little creature is staring up at you. I forgot about this one, but he is still full health. Um, Can I I presume I saw Rosalie just kick major ass? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm just going to shout out, that's my roommate! Really quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, in the meantime, what does the person on the phone say? Uh, the line picks up and you hear someone go, uh, student campus security, this is Rodolfo. How may I help you? Hi, Rodolfo. My name is Essie Hepburn. Um, I just wanted to know if you guys could get over here because we seem to have a little bit of a tr- problem. We're being kind of attacked right now. Oh, um, what's your problem? Well, there's a bunch of like black, oily kind of creatures, and the dog sniffed them out, and now I, I don't even know. My roommate had some kind of light coming from her and it was really cool but there's still some left and there's one right in front of me okay um well so the thing is uh first of all that doesn't sound possible we have all kinds of magical wards on the school that it might um, not sound possible and yet here it is happening you hear like the sound of like book pages flipping on the other line Um, well, so what you're describing, there's only a couple of creatures like that, and I really don't think they could get through the wards, but, um, we'll have a, uh, a golf cart out to this, uh, the area of, of your ping in the next five to fifteen minutes. Until then, if you could just, um, you know, do the adventuring that this school is known for. (laughs) I'm um, just gonna hang up in the middle of the (laughs) sentence. I'm so pissed off. (laughs) It's the first day classes haven't even started yet. <laughs> we have done no classes, and they're like, just adventure. <laughs> just good luck. <laughs> For the organic opportunity. I'm gonna slam yeah. Yeah. the phone down, and then can I still take an action? Yeah, so that okay. was your free action. Beautiful. Um, I'm just so annoyed 
Uh, as he is going to cast a vicious mockery. I knew on it. Thing. I knew that's what you were gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Love that. Um, so as I look down at this creature, um, can you describe to me a little bit what the creature looks like? So this almost looks like uh, it's about the same height as Vesper, but way skinnier. Basically, just a skeleton with like weird rubbery gray skin stretched over it. This one's eyes are sort of a milky white rimmed with these sort of oily tears. It's got a little bald head, uh, like its forehead goes all the way back almost. Uh, And it stares up at you and and you can see sweating from its pores this like oily substance. You bald headed, discarded band-aid. You need a nose strip so badly. If I could douse you in Ben Nye powder, I would. You are so ugly, and they don't even believe you're here. <laughs> That's my vicious mockery. <laughs> yeah, I keep crying. <laughs> Roll damage. Okay, cool. Um, Vesper, you hear Rosalie tell this thing to stop crying. You don't hear it crying at all. <laughs> Alright, it takes four psychic damage. Awesome. Alright, so this one takes... This is this one. Alright, so... Awesome. Uh, do you have anything else you want to do with your turn? Um, Unfortunately, with... Yeah, with uh, bonus actions, I can do Bardic Inspiration, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, you can. Uh, um, can I throw some Bardic Inspiration over by... Uh, I'll do Rosalie, since she just... Actually, no, I'll do Fleur. Alright, what do you say that. to Fleur to, to Bardically <laughs> inspire her? Fleur! Hi! Your Bedazzling is amazing! You can make it a business! Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you, Essie, my- oh! Ian rolls his eyes and just says, please don't. So, <laughs> for the next ten minutes, for any roll, you can roll an, a d4 on top of it. Okay, cool. Oh, a d6. Sorry, d6. Bardic Inspiration is a d6. Okay. Um, Alright, next up is Whisper. So, um, I'm like seeing this thing having run up to Essie as she's on the phone having hung hung up with seemingly no success and is now just insulting the thing <laughs> um i'm like you might you might need a little help babe uh <laughs> so uh i i turn i i turn towards them and i'm going to cast chill touch so i'm going to make a uh, like a ghostly skeletal hand. i knew you would have that reaction uh and it's just going to like grab it like hard on the shoulder and just like it's this disembodied hand just grabbing it uh and that's going to be uh 24 to hit that hits oh my god um so that is gonna do seven necrotic damage uh and it can't gain hit points as your hand reaches out and touches it you watch as it almost deflates um, its little bones seem to shrink in its strange rubbery skin, and then it sort of almost half vanishes. You realize that as they've been exploding into oil, Vesper, as you look at them, uh, give me an arcana check real fast. Happily. It's 27. Oh, That's a nat wizard. 20. Oh that is a nat God. 20. 27 okay, total. Okay, on a nat 20. Nerd. Um... <laughs> Get it. You realize that these things are not exploding into oil. Rather, the oil is the manifestation of its presence on the material plane. And these things are not dying, but rather returning to their plane of origin. You're sure that if you had a little bit more time and the correct resources to consult, you could figure out what these things were and, and what that original plane was. Right. And you think all of this, having a little nerdy moment, as this creature explodes into oil and just douses Essie's pants. <laughs> Sorry, I promise I did not know that it would do that. Uh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. 
<laughs> I would press to digitate you, but it's an action. Sorry, babe. <laughs> Give it a moment. <laughs> All right, now. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take a, just a couple of feet towards Essie, just in like apology of like with my book. I'm like, oh, I'm so so I'm so sorry. <laughs> Essie is like actively trying to not throw up. <laughs> Fleur, it is your Fine. turn. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to run over here. Uh, and then I'm going to swing on this last one. Uh, so. As you go to swing, it's going to use a reaction. Okay. That's fine. It is a new turn. It yes, looks fine. up at you. Okay. You make eye contact with it for the briefest of moments. Can I have a wisdom saving throw, please? That ain't gonna be good. Oh, what? That's an 11. So great. Fleur, you look into this creature's eyes, and in it you see a reflection. You see a girl. Maybe 16 or 17 years old, beautiful blonde ringlets, sitting alone at a diner table. Across from her is a half drank milkshake. Whoever drank it is not coming back. There are tears in her eyes, and you know that they are only half anger, that the other half is heartbreak. And you can see through the window of the diner a man, or a boy, rather, about 17 years old with sort of tousled light brown hair and the build of a football player or a tackle ball player, get into a car. He gives the girl a sad kind of half-hearted wave and pulls away. And as he does, you watch the girl take her milkshake and throw it as hard as she can at the window of the diner. You take... Two psychic damage. Okay. And I assume that's full damage because it's not like piercing or slashing or whatever. Yeah, it's psychic okay. damage. That's what I thought. Yeah. I'm learning. Anyways, so because uh, Rosalie is flanked by the monster, do I get advantage on my attack again? Yeah. Well, Rosalie is flanking the monster. That's what I meant. She's not flanked by it. Yes. Yeah. Listen. All right. And, Does and a 25, 25 hits. Hit? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and roll damage. Perfect. Um... So that is 16. Yeah, you. this thing fucking explodes into a giant oily mess. Plus two, technically 18. I mean, it had six health left. Okay. Um, it explodes into a giant oily mess and, and soaks your shoes and the bottom of your flare jeans so completely. You think it's probably going to be impossible. No amount of stain remover will fix this. Disgusting. Um, there are no bodies left, notably, on this field. Um, Flirt you immediately high fives Rosalie. <laughs> in this like semi dark <laughs> area. <laughs> That's in character. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but like a an oily mess surrounds you. We are exiting initiative. Okay. Um, so I'm going to pull us back to our roleplay screen. Uh, you are standing, it's probably 1130 at night at this point. Um, in this section of the quad, uh, just maybe two blocks away from your dorm. Fleur, um, Fleur kind of like heads back towards Vesper and Essie. Um, do Rosalie and Ian follow? Oh, Vesper, yeah, yeah, I said the right names. Um, do Fleur, or do Rosalie and Ian follow Fleur? I'll follow, but I'm going to check back and before I follow, I'm just like, are you, are you okay? Are you guys okay? Yeah, I'm good. And I'm looking at Ian. And I'm feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, honestly, everyone. And Fleur's like shouting. She's like probably in the middle at this point. She's like, I love this stuff. This is what I was made to do. And then she kind of puts her great axe away. <laughs> and she looks at Ian. And then she looks at everyone. And she looks back at Ian to be like, this should be our adventuring party. What do you think? <laughs> Ian like raises an eyebrow 
and like calls Aspen over real quick and then looks over at, at Fleur again and just gives like a single nod. And as he bends down to inspect his dog and make sure he's okay. <laughs> Fleur nods back and goes, can we huddle for a second, everyone? And then, and then Ian groans, like the most <laughs> exasperated brotherly um, groan. If, if and we, he just if, says, not now, Fleur. If, if we huddle, can, can we do it in the light next to yeah. the emergency yeah, let's, call? Sounds good. They didn't even believe me. Yeah, Essie, when what I t- happened there? I saw, I you know, I could see literally nothing but the light. Yeah. You were on the phone? <laughs> yeah, so I called and they were like, ah, no way that's going to happen. Um, and no then they way. said they'd be here in five to 15 minutes and good. in a Just golf cart. Cross- sick. <laughs> somehow I don't feel like a golf cart and 15 minutes after the emergency call it's a bit is late. exactly going to to help personally but you know what here's the thing i think we kind of crushed it i think team i think we kind of crushed it and ian and i had a really great idea right ian yep we (laughs) conversed about it and we think that we should be an adventuring party we have to we have to pick one we all have to have one anyways like all of us yeah, like all five of us. Well, yes. It, it... Oh, six, uh, technically. Well, yeah, Aspen counts. <laughs> no six. Aspen counts. Well, I mean, if like, if we're going to have a party, I'd, I'd rather it be with my friends. So, which exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean you guys are. <laughs> we're exactly. <laughs> we're friends. Obviously, we absolutely we're... crushed that battle. Crushed we're also it. also all like nearby each other. So if something really comes point. up, it's, you know, we don't have to walk halfway across campus uh, before getting to whatever the problem is. Exactly. So I say we exchange phone numbers and we get a group chat going. We can we chat on extra exchange night. phone numbers and not do a group chat. Why would just because you don't like group chats, Ian. It's just a lot. It's a lot of notifications. It, and you-, you can mute them. Can our... Can our group name be a heart with two threes? Maybe if we need help. <laughs> I didn't. I, mean, I thought that was that for was danger. Like, yeah, dangerous. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Okay, maybe not. That was like a code. <laughs> I, I respond to danger. <laughs> <laughs> or does that mean that we are dangerous? Oh, oh I, I don't. I don't. Maybe we shouldn't be dangerous. Maybe no. not. <laughs> <laughs> I could be a femme fatale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm envisioning Essie. I'm envisioning that, red Mattel? lipstick. Men. <laughs> Not quite, Ian. Uh, I'll join if we call ourselves Danger or call the group text Danger. He's that gonna feels- join no matter what. Mm, you you don't have to. You'd abandon me, Ian. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Betrayal. I, I, Vesper just looks increasingly stressed on Ian's behalf. <laughs> just like their, their brow starts furring more and more. And he just like, his face starts scrunching more. He's just like, just leave, leave, leave my roommate alone. It's good, Vesper. Vesper, this, you're going to learn. This is just sibling things. As Fleur is saying this, <laughs> Ian's going to like reach over into Fleur's little like mini bag. Yeah, and Fleur start- like lifts her arm up. And start, without even thinking it starts pulling out aspen's leash after digging her out for oh a bit <laughs> fleur continues talking <laughs> as ian is doing this like this is totally normal and he just kind of grunts and is like i just don't want him to get hurt again and clips it onto aspen and is he okay and by it, the way he'll be fine Ruff. he just needs he needs some treats and maybe a nap mm-hmm. he always deserves those things we mm-hmm. should all i we should go to bed I need to wash my jeans. I have practice at 6 a.m. Should we um, that leave sucks. a note for the poli- campus police? They said they're not showing up, apparently. But if they get here late, like, I don't know. No. Is there any oil? There's not any oil left, right? Other than the there's, stuff that's on our clothes? There's, like, a little bit of oil on the ground, but it's mostly on your clothes. Mm. So there's not really any aftermath to see. Yeah, not not really. I just like rip off a post-it 
and conjure a tiny quill <laughs> and it's just this little like purple gel pencil <laughs> with this like a star uh, eraser that you just like put on the back mm-hmm. and uh and just like post it to the 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 police <laughs> like the, the thing Don't kill me. And, and just go we figured it out um thanks for help yeah <laughs> thanks for the help uh and i write down i look go we figured it out uh thanks question mark and my id number <laughs> <laughs> why, did you put your, why did you put your id number they're gonna well think- they might have questions about because okay would i know that like things aren't supposed to get in the school right um yeah i'd, I'd say that like Part of the optional reading for orientation that nobody does unless they're a giant nerd is about the school's history. And part of the school's history included um, a rather complex and dense section about the warding spells that protect the school. And from what you understand, there are warding spells for each and every plane that could potentially interfere. But the largest and most complex and most important of these spells relate to protection from the Feywild, which is the plane of the Fey, and the Infernal Plane, which is the plane of demons. There are lesser protections from the Celestial Plane, um, the plane of water, things like that, but really the primary ones are uh, the Feywild and the Infernal. Cool. I go, I don't know what those were other than gross, but um, I do know they are probably like like 99.8 they're not supposed to be here uh so you know they might have questions is all i'm saying uh right and then rosalie's gonna take some of that oil that's on her skirt and just rub beware on the post with the oil <laughs> <laughs> he is gonna just kind of like tilt his head and be like actually a nice touch <laughs> Does that count as vandalism? No, it's for the students. <gasps> if it's vandalism, okay. that's cool. I like to be vandalism. You put vandalism? I think it adds a certain... Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi, exactly. Yeah. Fleur doesn't know what that means. She's just heard it on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and she's picked out context clues for oh. when it makes sense. <laughs> Etsy a thousand percent does know what that means, but would never tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right. I'm, I'm just so, gonna look surprised at uh at Flora using the phrase. <laughs> like, the I, five of you, you know, begin to head back. You go back to your dorms. Um Essie and Rosalie and Fleur part ways with Vesper and Ian at the elevator. Fleur and Ian give each other uh each a hug. Um Rosalie and Essie sort of like awkwardly look at each other as if they don't understand if they're supposed to hug Ian as well. Uh, Vesper, you give Rosalie just like the world's most formal handshake for some reason. <laughs> and then you and, and Ian Which and I have to imagine this is, I'm very short, so it's like... Yeah, yeah. It's like You are like reaching straight up. Luckily, yeah. Rosalie isn't too tall. Um, Love that. You and, and Aspen and Ian head back to your room. Uh, Rosalie and Essie, you head back to your room. You say goodbye to Fleur. Fleur, do you give them hugs? Absolutely. Fleur gives you each just like a really warm hug. Um, very excited. Uh, Essie re- replies to your hug with like a little kiss on each cheek. Very <laughs> posh of her. Rosalie sees Essie give you a kiss on each cheek and like sort of tries to do the same thing, but seems a little bit more awkward, less <laughs> practiced. Um, and you part ways and go into your rooms. Um, you're welcome to role play this a little bit. I do have something here. Fleur. Yes. You walk into your room. Camila has, it looks like, spent the last hour or so unpacking her side of the room a little bit more. Um, she was mostly unpacked when you got here, but she's hung up a few more pictures. Uh, notably in her pictures, um, there are very few of her family. Mm-hmm. You see maybe two. They look very formal, and it looks like it's just her and her dad. As you walk in, she turns to look at you and is smiling and is like, Fleur! Are you okay? Are you okay? Oh my, what? Yeah. 
Hey. What happened to you? Do you Whoa. need like a pair of sweatpants or like a Oh no, I have some. And like Fleur <laughs> zips open her suitcase and pulls out a velour sweat set. It's baby <gasps> Fruity blue. Couture. Yes, I have exactly. that same one in pink. Oh my god. I love us. I love us too. I really do love us. Okay, so here's what happened. First of all, I'm gonna tell you what happened and then I wanna know what happened with Yes, me. absolutely. Yes. We need to like Perfect. just we need to dish. So Ian and I. And um, the crew that we were hanging out with during uh, orientation, uh, we we took Aspen for a walk. You know what happens? Weird, oily, disgusting creatures attack us. Straight up, don't know how that happened, but it was fun to hit things. Vesper okay, said that things weren't supposed to show up on campus at all and that that wasn't supposed to happen, but... Good practice, you know, gotta say. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just gotta get a couple swings in whenever you can. Exactly. Yeah. Could not agree more. <clears throat> Cannot wait for us to have that fighting class together, by the way. It's gonna be so much fun. The Great Weapon Fighting Course. I'm <sighs> so excited. I'm and- literally stoked. Okay, you didn't hear this from me, but okay. I heard from one of the seniors on uh-huh. the team uh-huh. that the instructor is, like, really cute. Love that. Yeah. I'm gonna flirt with the instructor. Okay, and I'm going to, like, wing woman you so hard. Yes, I love to hear it. Hell yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, that was it. We just, like, fought a couple of things, and, like, there's gross oil on my beautiful bell-bottom pants, but it's okay. I'm just going to cover up the oil, because I don't think anything's going to get that out. So I'm going to just say I'm my gonna mom, it. well, not my mom, my nanny, long story. Yeah, I, you're going to have to not, tell me about that. Well, Okay, I, I actually want to talk to you about that in just okay. a minute. I was going to say, yeah. um, she sent me with a slide stick if you want one, but, like, I yeah. don't think it'll help. Um, yeah, so, things. yeah, the, the Dane thing went great. We, like, ate dinner together. He was, nice. like, super nice. He loaned me his jacket. She, like, points to, like, a Letterman jacket hanging off the bed. You need to keep that. I'm going to. Good. Like, even if it doesn't work out, I'm keeping it. That's yours now. You I'm can get not, another one. Yeah, exactly. Like, I've had exes ask for their hoodies back. Absolutely the fuck not. You gave that to me. It's mine now. Once it's in my possession, it's mine. Exactly. Exactly. Um. So, yeah, I was like, it was just, like, super fun. He walked me back here. Cute. We, like, talked the whole time. He was like, yeah, do you want me to come you? upstairs? I was like, oh, of course. Good. Yeah, obviously. If he didn't, he was, like, I was going to punch him. He was like, do you want me to come upstairs? I was like, you know, I think that my roommate and I should probably set some ground rules about that sort of thing before I invite you up. And so Good I idea. like, yeah, I just, I just like, you know, boundaries. Yeah. Um, But there is something I want to talk to you about besides that, yeah. which we can broach at another time. Yeah, 100%. Like, you know. I have an idea. Um, And I know we just met and please let me know if this like crosses a boundary for you and you don't want to talk about it. And um, I just, I want you to know that like, I respect you and I respect your brother and and everything, but like I want to ask mm-hmm. and it's going to sound so weird and I'm sorry if this is rude and presumptive and please feel free to like kick my ass if like this is not the question to be asking you. Um, and she like kind of pauses for a minute and plays with her hair uh, pretty nervously and looks at you for a long time. And, I'm an open uh, book, Cammy. Can you, you roll a perception check? Yeah. Uh, that is a 17. There's something about her expression that brings back the way she was looking at, at Ian earlier that you found slightly off-putting. Um, just something a little bit removed in it as, as she thinks about how to ask this question. And there's also something very familiar in that expression. Mm-hmm. Um, something about sort of the way she wrinkles her nose when she's trying to think of how to say something. And she goes, um, it is about Ian. And I remember you said that you're a twin. Yeah. Um, so I know this is going to sound crazy and super, like I said, presumptive and rude and everything. Flirt. I know Ian's your brother, but, um, it... Is, is he, are you, oh, are you like blood related? Oh, no, <laughs> no, we're twins. He's adopted. Right. That's like no yeah. secret. We Okay. Do, but like, he's my brother. He's like okay. my twin brother. Does he like, no, like he, he was adopted. Oh yeah. No, no, no. Like who? Oh no. Like 
he was adopted the day he was born. Like, like we were, like I was born and then he showed up at the hospital and then my parents were like, that's yeah. our baby now. And so he's my twin brother. We were born on the same day. We're twins. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to be blood related to be siblings. No, 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 no. I, I get that. I get that. I'm just, um, I was just wondering. Why? It, I was just curious. You don't really look alike. Um, I can be too curious for my own good. Yeah, sometimes. but Cammy. What? You're also not really good at hiding things. I so like what's going on. It's nothing. It's um, even if it's just a hunch or a thought. I just um, uh, roll an insight check. Okay. Nineteen. You roll a quick deception check. Okay. Um. She looks nervous now, but not in the same way. Um, she kind of stops for a minute and says, I, um, I just, I'm a member of an adopted kids support group on campus, and I was wondering if he'd want to join and come to a meeting with me sometime. You and you can tell that this isn't, like, the whole truth, but it's definitely part of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my yeah, um I can talk to Ian about that if you want. Yeah, I I'd, I'd really uh, appreciate it. I'm sure everyone would love to meet him. All right. Yeah, I'll shoot him a text. Yeah. Uh, and and Fleur pulls out her phone and texts Ian. Cammy asked about us. She guessed that you were adopted? Question mark. Not sure how she clocked that so quickly. Question mark. Question mark. She's lying to me question mark question mark i'm pretty sure dot 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 she says there's an adopted kid support group and that she was adopted dot 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 but she's hiding something period send okay um thank you i just uh yeah yeah, i yeah and she stands up and uh starts to change if you want to you can roll a perception check yeah or since she's funny. since she's been kind of shady, yeah, kinda. <laughs> Please. Okay, that's not great. That's a fifteen. That's good enough. Um, it was a DC thirteen. Oh, sick. So she uh, changes pretty quickly. Uh, neither of you are very shy about changing in front of other people. You spend a lot of time in locker rooms. Um, you both sort of like change into your matching sweatsuits, and you happen to glance over. Um, as she, uh, just, you know, pulls off her sports bra and pulls on a actual sleep shirt and you notice a birthmark, um, over her chest, sort of over where her heart would be. It's shaped almost like a flower, but it's, it's very organic in shape. Nothing about it looks purposeful. Uh, just sort of looks like a flower in bloom. It's maybe two or three shades darker than her skin, but not incredibly noticeable. Um, she glances over, she pulls on her shirt, and she goes, oh, you like it? It's Von Ditch. Oh, it's cute. Oh, thank you. Um, okay, well, I, again, I'm sorry. I know that was awkward. No, I good. don't like talking about it a lot. My dad and I's whole thing is a little weird, and um, it's just when you meet someone and you think you might have that in common, it's not really a subject you know how to broach, but it is something you want to talk about to them about you know that's why i don't know whenever anybody asks i try to be open about it because ian and i aren't ashamed of the fact it's not a big deal you know we're still we're still twins sure yeah um that sounds like a really nice dynamic to have Mm -hmm. she like uh gets into bed you turn off the lights uh do the rest of you have anything you want to do before you go to bed can ian respond to this text (laughs) Yes, Ian, you can respond to your text. We can jump to Ian and uh, Vesper's room real fast if there's anything you want to do, Vesper, as well. Let me know, and then we'll jump to Rosalie and uh, Essie. Uh, I imagine they, like, head back to their room, and Ian's going to, like, feed Aspen, make sure Aspen's all cozy, comfy, address any, like, 
superficial wounds or whatever the Aspen may have, and then crawl up in bed and do that stereotypical college boy thing where he always has a ball in his hands for some reason. (laughs) And he's going to just chunk it up against the like opposite wall of like his bed while he just like thinks out loud stream of thought to Vesper. Oh my God. (laughs) And so he's chugging this ball. He's like, that was weird, right? And yes, that was, that was very strange. Yes. What kind, what kind of creatures do you think that they were? I don't really know. I, 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 I was a little distracted with how many of them there were, you know, I'm, I thought we'd have like a chance for like, for like, like a practice round, uh, mm-hmm. but that didn't happen. Um, but I, I, I could probably like try and look, look it up or something. You mentioned that there's like no way for them to get on campus, right? Well, yeah. Um, can I like go and like pull up, pull out the like, grab the book from my desk, and then like I start to like flip through, and I'm like, yeah, because there's like wards around. Uh, the school and there's ones for different planes and stuff for like the most common threats but um I, it's just it's there to keep us safe um and considering the uh, response time of our campus police i'm concerned so yeah. you uh yeah you you push aside a couple of textbooks you've you've gotten for your classes you've got several spell books a uh, bestiary um you know a, a history book and then finally you get to the like pamphlet that was at the very bottom because of course you've been flipping through your textbooks ahead of classes and you do pull it open and it it, it does say that that there are these words you you did remember correctly it just seems kind of sad i don't know it's kind of weird sad. yeah it just sounded it sounded kind of like they were crying no it didn't i Etsy also thought they were crying. I did. They did not seem. I don't know what sound that was they were making. Um, but it was. I. It's not crying I've ever heard. Ian catches his ball and like rolls over to face Vesper. Is like you didn't hear him crying. The oil was like pouring from their eyes. Did you look any of them in the eyes? No. No. I've. Uh. Well, not only would that be kind of difficult. Um. But. <laughs> But they're kind of the same height. Uh, but oh yeah, they were the same height. <laughs> um, but uh, but I that does not seem like um, that that does not seem like something I would be enticed to doing. Uh, but no, I just also didn't get really a chance. I stayed back, like I I was letting you guys handle it. I can do I can do things from far away, and I'm like 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 I like I'm useful from far away. <laughs> Ian chuckles and was like. That missile thing was pretty sick, actually. Nice job. Oh, thank you. And, and and like he just pushes his glasses <laughs> glasses up. Uh, but it's like, but yeah, I I the closest I got was um going to help Essie, but uh, I didn't know. I didn't see and like I didn't have, notice any of that. Hmm. Um, I do uh, I do uh, tell I, I relate to, to Ian that I'm like that I realize that um so the reason that I think they're not supposed to be here is because all that oil that they were like gooping um it 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 it's for it's what it's what's like material that like that's how they're materializing here and that's that like we didn't kill them kill them we just like sent them back you know we didn't kill them no, I, I i don't know but i don't think so I'm assuming at this time, which is why I left the note, because uh, I think you know I, 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 I have mixed feelings right now about you know the the infrastructure of the security of the students for at the school, but uh, but I do think that they they know they're going to know more than I do about it. Um, so, huh? I wonder if they'll contact you. I I left my ID number. Uh, and just kind of like nods, like actually that was maybe kind of smart, but he's not going to say that. Vesper, can you roll a quick history check for me? Yeah. One of them good, good wizard checks. Mm. Oh. Mm. Uh, a, it's an at one. That's that 10, but it's an at one. A not good, good wizard check. Well, the good news is that crits only matter in combat. True, but <laughs> it didn't um, feel great. It didn't feel great. It didn't. Uh, it didn't was a plus nine, though. Off the top of your head, as, as you're saying all of this back to Ian, you don't remember, you can't, like, figure out what this creature was. You do realize, though, that you could 
probably find at least some version of it in the bestiary that you have for one of your classes. Um, and probably if you took the beginning of this long rest to consult it, you could find the information that you wanted. Okay, um, I, uh, yeah, I can do that then. Uh, then awesome. I, I, I pipe up to Ian. I'm just like, yeah, like I, I couldn't really quite remember anything off the top of my head, but I'm, I'm certain there is a, like an answer, a solution, information in somewhere here. Um, and I'm good at finding it. So that's what I'm going to do. And I like, I try, try my best to like inspire, like inspire confidence, but also being like, I'm going to find, I'm going to find, I'm going to find it. <laughs> yeah. So I will have you roll an investigation check, but uh, hold on to that roll until after we talk to Essie and Rosalie. Sorry, Ian, awesome. did you want to add something? Oh, I was going to just say Ian's going to hear his phone go off and pull it out and see this message from Floor and immediately like start frantically typing back. You told her all caps, question mark, question mark, exclamation point, exclamation point. <laughs> Why would she ask? How would she know? Can you come here? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Like 18 inches of height difference between the two of you. Fleur <laughs> <laughs> um, receives that text and responds with, I'll be outside your room in five minutes. <laughs> Ian responds back with like letter bashing. <laughs> And then a frowny face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to hop to Essie and Rosalie. In your room, uh, it's it's pretty much exactly how you left it. Ro Essie, uh, your computer is still on. It's got like a little screensaver going of what appears to be just like a tube that continues to get longer and fill the screen more and more. Uh, Rosalie, you realize that you had left your cell phone here and it's just like plugged in next to your bed where you left it. It doesn't look like there's any new texts or anything, but um, your own personal laptop is still sitting on your desk and you see that you have an email as well. Um, before I do that, it it's Stark, right? Yeah, it's Stark. All right. Um, I'm going to look over at Essie and be like, you don't have any, like, scent allergies or, like, because, like, I, I want to light some candles because it's dark now, but it's, oh. like, you know, I, I got, I brought on scented, I brought on electric, oh. I brought. I, I don't, I don't have any scent allergies. You're good. <laughs> okay. I'm going to light some candles for atmosphere and for worship, but. Hey, you know. <laughs> that, that thing you did today was really cool, by the way. It was, you know, it's, no, it's seriously, not me. Rosalie, you're really powerful. It, it's not me. It's, it's you know, my lady. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, but you're the one who challenged her. Challenged. Thanks. Channel. I mean, channeled. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I'm better at talking. <laughs> I mean, like, but you, you hurt them with just your words. Like. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that a lot in my life, so I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I could I never seen that before. So well, I couldn't make like everything light up like you did. You know, it's seriously, I, I you're badass. Thanks, Essie. I mean, you're light yourself. <laughs> We're part of a party now. I know. <laughs> so cool. Danger. Danger. <laughs> I'm gonna be a great femme fatale. <laughs> you know how to put on red lipstick? Yeah, I put one on for um, when we did Chicago. Or, sorry, Detroit. <laughs> one year. Fraylin. It was Fraylin. It was, I was Fraylin. Yeah, it was Fraylin. Um, I was Belma Veli. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe we can, like, get Fleur in here and, like, all be, like... Red lipstick babes, like <laughs> that would be so cool. Be like a thing, and so I don't know. <laughs> and so, I think we totally could. Yeah. So, um, hey, uh, Rosie, do you know how to get stuff out of denim? Cause this oil is like all over me. No. Maybe My we should like the laundry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My mom doesn't but usually we just kind of give it to a laundress or dry cleaner <laughs> uh, 
Should we check out the laundry room? I mean, I'm not really Do you think tired. they have a dry cleaner? I mean, we can tr look. I just got to I got to email my friend really quick and check my stuff, but we can do okay. that in like a second. Let's yeah. get changed in our PJs and then let's do it. Yeah, and I I, I got to get my email from my friends too. <laughs> Oh, cool. <laughs> Look at us having friends. College is great. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm going to sit down in the desk to open up my laptop as well. I'll open up uh, my email too and I'll check it out. Uh, Essie, you open up your email. Um, the IM from Hawk is still open in the background, but but you open up your, your email browser Click on it, and uh, you have a new chill mail email. Um, you open it up. It is from, I don't want to get the name wrong. Uh, it is an email from your father. Uh, it is oh. pretty terse, very short, um, not particularly warm um your father abner juniper has has sent you an email it says dear esther comma good luck on your first day of school warm regards abner there is also an attachment to this email would you like to open it yes you click and open the attachment. It appears to be a uh, blurry scan of a crayon drawing. Uh, it shows a stick figure um, wearing a little triangle dress with pointed ears standing next to a much shorter stick figure. Um, similarly pointed ears, a little dress on it. Uh, that. And it says in incredibly poor handwriting that takes you quite a while to decipher. Good luck. G-U-D-L-E-K. With a uh, like very poorly drawn heart. The letter U. And uh, a little name. The name is nearly unreadable, but you know that this is a drawing from your half-sister, Carla, who is about three and a half years old. Um, you see her maybe once a year for holidays, um, but uh, she has always been the only member of your dad's side of the family who ever showed you any affection. And it looks like she drew you a little card for your first day at school. <laughs> um i'll uh immediately email back and i'll say um dear father thank you for the warm regards please tell carla i say hello i promise i'll make you proud and essie goes to type out love essie but then deletes the love and just says Essie. All right, you send an email in response and begin typing, I assume, a summary of your day to Huck. Yep, <laughs> that was my next thing. <laughs> As you do that, uh, Rosalie, you log into your personal laptop. This thing is pretty slow moving. It used to be your mom's um, from work. Work recently updated her personal laptop and you got the hand-me-down um you haven't had one of these ever before she taught you how to use it a couple weeks ago um but uh you look at your screensaver which is a picture of your mother your father and harry at your high school graduation they're all kind of standing awkwardly together with you but they all look very proud um you open up your email and check the inbox there is an email inside from your other parent your dad um dr eugene motley i open it <laughs> uh there is an attachment here as well but there's also a much warmer message than 
what Essie received. It says, my dearest Rosie, with a little um, bracket, not a bracket, a, a less than, greater than sign, and the, the number three, just like you taught them. Uh, my dearest Rosie, heart, I hope your first day was as lovely as you are. Your mother and I are both so proud of you, and we know we couldn't make it work between us. But watching you succeed is the greatest joy either of us have ever known. I wish I could have helped you move in today, but I am sure that Harry and your mom did a great job. Please let me know if there's anything you need for the dorm, or if you're having trouble getting into any classes. I'm sure my colleagues there would be very happy to help you. I love you very much. I am so proud of you. You grow more beautiful and kinder every day. Dr. Jean Motley, and then in parentheses, dad. I am typing away as fast as I can. <laughs> Hi, daddy. <laughs> I missed you so much. It's already been so long without seeing you. I know you're busy. I know it's okay. But maybe, maybe we'll get some coffee soon. Um, I have many new ideas about what to write. I'm particularly thinking about writing about a group of friends. Oh, by the way, I made a lot of friends today. Oh, I think uh, I, I really hope we continue staying friends. And I don't know this. I, I don't want to mess this up. So I'll, I'll, I'll update you. Anyways, I'll write you another email tomorrow. <laughs> Love you. Uh, and then I'll put yours always, Rosie. And I'll put the heart. Oh, I'll put the parentheses 3-3. Uh, three, three, but then I, I remember 2 threes is dangerous. <laughs> erase it and then i'll put it again after remembering our party <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and so <laughs> do we have a printer in our room you do not but there is a computer lab uh sort of right near the 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 main common room of the dorm okay cool so if you want to print your picture, you're welcome to. Yeah, I'll go and do that. <laughs> Rosalie, there's also an attachment on Jean's email. Do you open that? Oh, I do open it. This is a picture of Jean holding a like digital camera up to the mirror, um, doing a little peace signs, just like you taught them, um, smiling. It's very blurry. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> their like long hair is sort of tied back into a ponytail. They've got their own little rose colored glasses sitting on the bridge of their nose and they're smiling really big. Like they're very proud of themselves for figuring this out. It's a selfie. <laughs> um, before I send the email, I'm going to look over to Essie and be like, hey, Essie, um, you want to take a photo with me really quick? Yeah, I'll I'll totally take a photo with you. Yeah, it's it's for my friend. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to see my what's going on. <laughs> hey, so, I sh I could send a photo to. Yeah, someone too. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so Rosalie's also gonna do a little you sign in the mirror, or actually, we're, I'm gonna Rosalie's gonna extend the camera as far as she can, and then do the peace sign. <laughs> With S, you sort of pressed up against your face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you snap a picture. The flash blinds both of you for a moment, but you manage to get that picture in. Um, you kind of plug your camera in to your laptop uh, by with a uh, sort of micro uh, USB cord. Not even that. We have those, like, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. The, the there old There was ones. nothing micro about them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you connect it to, to your computer. You send a little copy of, of the picture to Rosalie, uh, to, to Essie, um, and send a little picture to, to Jean as well. Yeah, and I'll click send. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Essie goes to the computer lab very quickly. Essie, you managed to get a little printout of that drawing. I'm also going to print out the picture me and Rosalie just took. <laughs> and you print out that picture too. Perfect. You hang it on your wall next to your playbills. Um, both of them kind of in a spot of honor above the head of your bed. Vesper. Yes. You are in bed sort of leafing through the bestiary that you purchased for your class. 
Ian slips out into the hallway, you think probably to talk to Fleur. Um, you're kind of getting codependent vibes from them. <laughs> and as you do so, can you tell me what that, uh, that... 22. Oh, all right. That is well above the DC of 15. So you, uh, flip through your bestiary looking for a description that matches the creatures you and your party just battled. It takes you a little bit, but you find them under the section of fey beings. From what you understand, these things are called boggles, uh, though colloquially they are called either boogies or boogeymen. Um, and they are, like many other fey beings, associated with emotions. The way that you understand the fey wilds is that the fey plane relates to two separate entities. First and foremost, emotions but also seasons, which, as you understand, are tied to the emotional whims of the creatures that, that make their home in Feywild. These particular creatures, Boggles, materialize when strong emotions are felt in the places between the Feywild and the material plane, in the places where the barriers between these two planes rub up against each other. Um, they're often found near openings and gateways and paths, or even where sort of the fey and the material become sort of entangled. From what you understand, they are most associated with the unseelie court of the fey, the more mischievous, darker, more more evil sort of tinged beings yeah. within within the fey realm. Realm. These particular creatures are generated by feelings of intense loneliness, isolation, and abandonment. And you come to understand that creatures that look into their eyes face down the moment in their lives when they felt the most alone or isolated or abandoned by the people who care about them. Right. Um, they're not particularly dangerous, but it is very uncommon to find them here. Uh, they definitely require either a nearby portal or the sort of arcana of the Fey leaking into the material plane. Outside, yeah. Fey and Ian. Uh, Fey, you wait for Ian, and he emerges sort of dressed in a pair of uh, plaid flannel pants um, and a slightly oversized t-shirt that you recognize him having purchased from the uh, Sea of Trees Headwaters National Park a few years prior. It's got a couple holes in it. It is absolutely covered in dog hair. Um, and, and his hair is messy as if he's been lying in bed. The back is sort of pressed up. Faye is uh, dressed <laughs> not Faye. Well, <laughs> you said Faye like three times. <laughs> You gotta, okay. you gotta correct me when I say it the first time. It just clicked for me. It clocked. Me. I honestly, you said the F, and my brain was like, "That's, that's right. what happened to me." I was like, "Yeah, the Fey Wild, the Fleur Wild, same thing." Obviously, um, Fleur is dressed in a uh, pair of a set of fruity couture uh, yeah. sweatpants, but she's also got on like a, a sleep shirt, a sort of loose fitting camisole underneath the zip up jacket. Mm -hmm. Uh, and she's got her hair up in, like, a sort of bun to protect the curls while she yeah, sleeps. exactly. Okay, first of all, Ian, love you. Mm. We need to... I didn't really like the Sea of Trees. I will drive didn't, back. You know I didn't. It you was know. my favorite family trip. I know. My absolute favorite family trip. I know, and I had a good time because you had a good time. Why are you bringing this up? I'm saying I will drive back there just to buy you another shirt so you stop wearing the holy shirt. This one is soft uh -huh. and worn in and full of memories. And we can make new memories in a new shirt that doesn't have no. a hole in your armpit. No, no. It's comfortable. It lives in a breeze. I don't sweat as much. Mm, good. Didn't I'm need that dude. vision. I'm tall. Yeah, I know. Don't talk to me about it. Whole foot almost. Um, Anyways, okay. What happened? Okay, so I don't listen. Cammy, Cammy was like super cool. Really like Cammy. I still like Cammy, but then when Cammy met you, she started acting all weird. I don't know if you yes. picked up on it. I get. I picked up on it. Okay, you picked up on it. Good. I'm glad because I was going to explain it to you. She's acting all weird, and then I walk in tonight and we're talking about things, and she's like, "Hey, got a question to ask you. Not sure how to ask it. Uh, are you and your brother blood related?" And I was like. Whoa. First of all, I'm an open book bestie. You know I'm going to tell you. 
obviously I'm going it, to, it's not a secret, but it's not something people just, ask. people don't clock it that quickly. Weird. Okay. Here's the second weird thing. She's adopted. Third weird thing. She's got a birthmark the same place as yours. What? Yeah. The same place? Same place. Does it look the same? Yeah. I know. It's weird, Ian. What is it? I don't like it, Ian. Uh, Does she say First of all, okay, we just met and she's already, listen, like I would tell anyone at any point, like, shh, sorry. That's where you can hear Fleur yelling in the hallway. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Fleur goes, listen, I'm loud. No, but we're in a dorm room. It's also like midnight. And, and no, but I just don't want anybody else to know that we're not real twins. Why not? I don't. That, that doesn't make us any less siblings, Ian. I don't want them to ask questions. I feel like when people find out that I'm adopted, they treat me weird. Okay. Okay. That I won't listen. If they ask, you know, I'm going to tell them. But if they don't ask, don't tell them. Fine. Don't, ask, don't tell. We know that's the rule. And I've adhered to the rule, but Cammy asked. And I just find it a little suspect that she yeah. figured it out so fast. When she was she at looking, me, what happened? She, she just like it just wasn't it wasn't like bad, but it wasn't like and then she nice. like wouldn't talk to you. Do you know she yeah, wouldn't talk to you? She would just talk to you about this this Dave Dane. Dane. He's hot. I'll I'll admit. Ugh. I know. Ugh. Whatever. Ugh. It's listen. Listen, I know most people talk to me instead of you because you're the quiet one and I'm the loud one, but I don't like it when people ignore you. It was weird. I don't. It's, mm, nobody she, should be ignoring you. Hmm. Well, mm, I don't know what to do about this. I'm going to be honest. Listen, the, the, the mark thing's weird. I don't like it. The birthmark it. thing's really weird. Here's, do you want me to just like, obviously she's my roommate and I think she's really cool. And we have a bunch of classes together and we're super similar and I like her a lot. You don't have to not like her just because she's like, no, weird no, I know. By me. But I'm saying, like, like I just want to make sure that you're not uncomfy. Because I mean, like, I'm obviously uncomfy, priority. but like that's part of my personality, so it's fine. That's fair. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good point. <laughs> okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna like keep being friends with Cammy. Maybe like poke her a little, like well, yeah, not like aggressively, saying, like, but like, like maybe I'll. It's weird. Cammy and I'll be friends, and then maybe like I'll figure out because she was. She was lying to me. She hid something from me. She's not a very good liar. I've... What's this about an adoption club? Yeah. So, like, I think that was her, like, swaying the situation to try and cover up a lie. I don't want to go. You don't have to go. But do you think I should go to see if it's even real? I don't know. Is there, like, a directory of clubs? Do you think Vesper would know that? There is a club fair tomorrow. Yeah, the okay. dean brought it up. Yeah. In okay. Her speech. <laughs> so how about you and I, how about the whole party goes to the club fair tomorrow and we just do like a little twin looky for the adoption club. Are you bringing Cammy? Cammy's not part of the adventuring party, but if she wants to come, I'm not going to say no. But I can say no if you don't want her to come. I just thought if she came, it might be more. We'll figure it out. It's fine. She can come. If, she cannot if, come. I don't care. If she asks, I'll say yes. If she doesn't ask, I won't say anything. Okay. How do you feel about that? I feel okay. okay. I, have a, I have another thought. Yeah. Should Aspen meet her? Would Aspen notice something like, like dogs have a weird like third sense? Like if there's, if you're sick or have diseases, yeah. you think we could, all have five senses. But do you think he could tell if like there's something weird? I, I'm not Aspen's your dog. I'll bring him over in the morning. Please do. <laughs> um uh and then Fleur goes listen Ian mm-hmm. she was hiding something from me I don't know what it means I don't think she was lying to me when she said she was adopted but she was holding something back and there are no pictures of her mom anywhere and she said mom and then nanny as if she doesn't have a mom so I don't know mm-hmm. there's listen and I like her That's I funny. like her a lot but I don't like that she lied to me well, maybe she's just not ready to share. I know. Not everyone's an open book like you, Fleur. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. By the way, those things, when I looked at it, what did you see? Because I saw when Garrett broke you up s- with me. Well, when we and me and Garrett broke up. 
That's what you saw? Yeah. You want to know what I saw? What? Remember when mom and dad told us? About- yeah, it was awful. Yeah, that's what I saw. And you just see a breakup? Are you kidding me? <laughs> it was really hard when Garrett and I broke up. Oh, okay. Well, uh, mine was traumatic. I traumatic. Agree. That was a bit more traumatic. Yeah. Oh my God. Is that the most but, disappointing thing in your life? Listen, you haven't had a breakup. You don't know what it's like. I've listened to all of your breakups. Okay. So it's kind of not like the I've same had as experiencing them. Anyways. Okay. okay. I love you. I really have to sleep. I have practice at 6 a.m. Yeah, that sucks. Um, I'm not going to get breakfast with you. That's too early. I'm tired. That's fair. I will text you when practice is done and then okay. we'll meet up for the fair. Okay. I'll live okay. now. And I guess, uh, did you get Rosalie and Essie's numbers? I feel like we exchanged numbers right after the fight on the walk back, right? You did. You said that you did. Yeah. Yeah. I'll text them at like 6 a.m. Can you text at like a normal hour? <laughs> I feel like it'll be too late by then. What if they already made plans? But if they wake up to a text from me, ooh, fun text from Fleur. Fine. I'm just turning my phone off. All right. That's fair. Bye. Love you. Okay. You love you. And he walks into the room and like slams the How door. How much of that did I hear? <laughs> you heard every part that Fleur yelled. So you heard <laughs> that like she and Cammie had a conversation. You heard that Ian's adopted. Yeah. Um, you heard <laughs> that the whole don't ask, don't tell thing. Um. Yeah, you, you heard, like, most of it. You heard that Cammie's adopted, which seems like maybe less publicly available information Knowledge, than Ian yeah. being adopted. So you got just, like, a really personal slice of a lot of backstories from a lot of people that you don't know that well. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did... Wait, did uh, did Aspen go out to the hall with them? No, no Aspen was just lying there staring at you as they argued outside. Yeah. Then before, before he comes back in, I like go over and I like scratch behind his ear and I just go like, is your, is your, are your days always so eventful? <laughs> <laughs> and I just give him like another scratch. He gives you like a big old lick across the face. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, when, yeah. when Ian walks in, are you still by Aspen? Yeah. <laughs> Ian's like, oh, I'm glad you're like, you're getting along. Yeah, yeah, we we are. Um, yeah, uh, I I look at I just like look at Ian for a sec, and I go, um, I, your sister is not very quiet, um, but I <laughs> no. will not have like heard anything you didn't want me to. Mm, it's fine. <laughs> It's fine. Okay, I'm yeah. just like I'm just... not gonna. Yeah, I just wanted you to know that. Like, I her. Yeah, she's. Yeah. Here next time. I mean, next time, just let me. I can like go for a walk. I can. You can have the room. I'm no, just I, I saying. Mean, now, you know, like the biggest secret now. Like we don't have any really other secrets. So, uh, yeah, I'm adopted, okay. and uh, Fleur and I are like the same age. Like you know, we're all kind of yeah. the same age as college, but um uh we just have pretended to be twins it makes more sense than explaining the whole floor was born I think a stranger brought me yeah. to a hospital my parents said i want it and I, then- <laughs> you said you were twins and that is that is like that is the truth is like the 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 extent of this of the story as far as um i need i need to like it, it does not affect my daily life to know your birth story um, but, uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's sweet, but also, uh, I just, I just wanted you to know that I heard, I was reading, um, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm good at like tuning out. Not that much. <laughs> She's loud. I know. I'm, I'm sorry. I, uh, that's kind of like a weird situation to be in, to hear all that. And then like, yeah, I just to admit want, that you heard all that. That's a, that's I just, pretty- I just wanted you to know. And like, I, it, it, it doesn't like I'm not going to go around like telling like it's just I wanted you to know that I knew without like that's not how I wanted to start. This is going to be a very long year if I just like didn't say that. That's cool. Of you guys. Um, But also uh, I do say that because I might be able to help. Uh, so if you do need anything with. Do you know Cammie? I mean, just as far as we met her and then oh. like in the hall and for practice and not any more than any of you do um 
but I, I, that just sounded strange to me. And, and strange. I, I, if yeah, just, I, if I can help, uh, I, 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 I will try. And I'm like looking up at Edian. <laughs> Ian just kind of grunts and like flops onto the lofted bed. Like that, that flop that you do, you're like halfway hanging on the bed, but not really like on it truly. Yeah. And yeah. he just kind of like groans, just like lets out this massive groan. And he's like, <laughs> this is a lot. Anyways, but thanks, Fess. That's really, that's really cool of you. So Ian, you flop down. You all uh, sleep through the night. Fleur, you get up ungodly early and you and Cammy go to practice together. Um, all of the awkwardness from the night before seems to have melted away from her. Um, and she actually, that morning, slides you a power bar and uh, on, on, on your way to, to practice. Uh, she says that she has extras. She also um, takes the liberty of filling up your... Oh your water bottle with her favorite flavor of energy drink, which you find out is, in fact, Purple Passion Fruit Smash, the very same as yours. Delicious. And um, you do notice as you both uh, go to your daily weight lift in your sports bras and short shorts, just as you'd accidentally coordinated in pink and blue, um, the birthmark on her chest has taken on the shape of falling leaves. Ian, the next morning you wake up, there is in fact a text on your phone from your sister to a group text that you had specifically requested not be made. Um, and as you pull on your shirt for the day, you look down, feeling a little bit more centered than the night before, a little bit more helpful almost as you reach over and uh, pull down from one of the top shelves a little page boy hat for Vesper that you know he would have to climb up a ladder to reach. And you place it on his head, and you look down it, and you notice that your birthmark has taken on the shape of falling leaves. We will be back next week, same time, same place, uh, for the club fair. We're going to have all kinds of opportunities. You'll be able to see the fraternities, the sororities, all kinds of strange clubs, creative writing club, acting club, Theater Club. They are two separate clubs indeed. Uh, of course, there is the Chess Club, the Dragon Chess Club to be specific, the Student Conclave for Majors of Faith, etc., etc. We can't wait to all see you back next week. Thank you so much for joining me and my lovely players when we revisit our heroes such as they are. Thank you so much for joining us and have a lovely, lovely day. Next time on Tabletop Tavern. I'm sorry, I have a very serious animal dander allergy. For lack of better words, you are very gender. But you all do watch as Ian just shoves a handful of condoms into his pocket. But, um, Ariadne on Kainte. Excellent pronunciation. Yes. So how much of that was for me and how much was of that was to make Garrett jealous? Hmm? I'm gonna just nod and I'll kind of hold on to Essie's sleeve. Oh, it's okay, we'll promise <laughs> together. What's your pet's name? Oh, uh, Dracula, sir. <laughs> Thank you for watching this week's episode of Tabletop Tavern ALSU. Remember, you can tune into episodes live as they premiere over on Twitch on Monday nights. If podcasts are more your speed, please check the description box below for a link to find Tabletop Tavern on your favorite podcast platform. While you're down there, don't forget to check out our other socials for extra credit. I hope to catch you around campus sometime, and go Griffins!